Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Beverly Fells Jones and the Silver Fox of Consciousness. And today I'm excited because I am making a special present for my good friend. And I haven't made this recipe in quite some time. And it is my very best super special lemon meringue pie. So come along if you're new to this channel. Just know that it's an eclectic channel. I think of it as a variety show because I talk about many things and I make sure that each one of them goes in its special playlist. So when I'm talking about Napoleon Hill, he has a playlist. When I'm cooking, it has a playlist. When I'm working in the garden, it's a playlist. And a soon to come new playlist is How to Live to 125. So if you're new, please subscribe and hit the bell. And if you have been here before, and even if you're new, hit the thumbs up button when you, when you have seen how to make a lemon meringue pie. Okay, so for the lemon meringue pie and putting it together, um, there's a number of things. Number one, you got to have a good recipe. And I have a wonderful recipe that I have been using for many, 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 many years. And it's a cookbook that's old, but you can probably find it. It's pies and pastries, appetizers, main dis dishes and desserts. And the woman's name on it is Jane Pittman. So, okay, hopefully you can see that right there. Okay, I'll take a picture of it. And in here, if you see, I got all this splatter on here because I've used this recipe many times. And what's happening is I don't make it that often. I make it when I'm going to a certain friend's house, mainly because as you, if you've had lemon meringue pie, it is sweet. And I've told you before, it's just me and my daughter, and she cooks her own food, I cook my own food. And when we get these sweets, we don't eat them all. So it'll be like, I'll take a piece out for her and a piece out for me when I get to my friend's house and then the rest will be for her and I told her she can serve it um, during the card game or she can put it in her refrigerator and no one ever has to know that it's there. I get the impression from her nobody will know that it's there. So anyway, it's a nine inch baked pie shell. Normally I make my pie shell. There's some tremendous pie tr crust recipes in here that use oil and butter and and all of those kinds of things however I'm going to my friend's house and so I'll reach over here and get this and it's a Marie calendar pie crust it's a deep dish nine inch and in a little bit I will be putting it in the oven and bake it because it needs to be pre-baked for this recipe because we're not baking the the, the lemon uh, custard we're going to be cooking it in, in a pot so what do I need for this well I need one and three quarters cups of sugar and I'm just gonna while I'm doing this I'm gonna put it in the pot so in a medium saucepan so got my saucepan from Ikea I really love this um, and I'm going to combine the sugar, so this is one and three quarters cup of sugar. 
Okay, let's put it, let me show you there. There we go. Pull it out a little bit. Sorry about that. One and three quarters cup of sugar. And then we have six tablespoons of cornstarch because this needs to get thickened. All right. It needs to be thickened, and um, cornstarch helps do that, and it helps it be clear. You know, with cornstarch, and when you do like gravy with cornstarch, your gravy is pretty clear. Well, that's why you do that, but we're still going to use two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and one quarter teaspoon of salt. So I'm putting that in the bowl. So, got those done. So those bowls are empty. You know, it's so funny because, you know, you watch the cooking shows on TV and and you they got all these little bowls and I, and I went out and bought all these little tiny bowls and I was going to copy the folks on TV, right? So, I found out I use these more for tea bags, um, you know, because what these are is that so, they, so that you can see how much is being put in. We don't need the butter yet, but it's going to be one tablespoon of butter. So, what I'm doing, in fact, I'm going to take my little big whisk here because I need to, I want to smooth out. The sugar and the cornstarch and the flour, and I probably should have sifted the flour. Cornstarch, not so much. It'll it'll dissolve in water really quick. All right. So this is flour, salt, cornstarch, and sugar. So that's all in the pot. Now, what it wants you to do next is I'm going to be dealing with the egg yolk. Okay, I'm back. So, got my bowl for my egg yolks. And so I'm going to separate the eggs. Now, there's a number of ways you can separate eggs. I have a couple of these things. I've got this one, which will, the yolk goes in here and the egg white goes out here. This is another one, egg yolk goes in egg white comes out. So, I got to get myself organized again. Let me move these out of the way. Here's my water. So, my egg yolk, my egg whites are going to go in here because this is what I'm going to use to, to make the meringue because I'm testing out the new Mixer. All right, so let's see if you can see that. Yes, good, 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 good. Move these out of the way. Put that there. All right, I've got gray double A large eggs. Just picked them up last night, so they're really fresh, and so. And the thing about doing it this way, all right, is, so I'm shaking a little bit. There's a fat piece of, of egg white sitting on that, so it had a little bubble in it. Okay, so now all of the egg white has come out. I've got my egg yolk in the middle, so I'll dump it. So one of the things when you're doing these separations that's very important. You cannot get any egg yolk in the egg white. So if the egg yolk breaks, you just put that egg aside and say, okay, I'm going to have scrambled eggs or I'm going to make something that uses the whole egg. Because if you get egg yolk in the egg white, it will not fluff up. All right. So that's that one. Let's see how this one works. It has a little bigger
bottom, I got some egg shell in here. Come on, break off. Get rid of that hat. I just doesn't want to break. <gasps> See? Ah, but the egg yolk didn't break. How about that? The egg yolk didn't break. Thank goodness. So we're going to do this again. Ooh, it keeps falling through, so I don't like this one. This one goes away. <laughs> it's just going to go away. Egg yolk still didn't break. Yeah, I don't like that one. That one came from a, um, a different set of, of measuring things. Now, here's something I just learned recently, which I went, oh, that's pretty cool. So when you get an eggshell in the egg yolk, or when you break it, and I'm right-handed, but they said all you do is you take the eggshell, well, it's not as easy as they showed it on TV, but that's one egg, piece of eggshell. There's two of them here. And it just kind of comes into the eggshell. That's not too bad. Boy, that's better than trying to fight with a spoon and, and all of that. I saved my eggshells. For the garden. I put them, I bury them in the garden. So that's two. And I can count the holes in my egg thing, egg carton. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to do this if you don't have an egg separator. Come on. Fall on through. That's the only thing. You got to be patient and let it fall through. Okay, that's three. Now I'm going to do one the old fashioned way. I get this eggshell to do. And so that's half. And then you let the egg yolk fall into the other half as the egg white falls out. I got another piece of eggshell in there. Okay, so from side to side, you let the, and, and as the egg white, you know, comes out. So, that's the other way. And one more piece of eggshell in here. So I guess, as I, I did in my other video on baking the fruit bread. Maybe I'll learn how to do that one-handed eggshell breaking that uh, a lot of chefs does learn in class. So if you work for the other one, I am going to pastry school. I start January the 21st, 2020. And um, hopefully you'll join me on that journey as I talk about the things I learned. And <laughs> maybe find out some things that they didn't know. They never can tell. You know, you know, meet a mold, beat the egg yolks and water till smooth. So the water is one and three quarters cup. But before I do that, I need to do one more thing. So we're going to move this right here. Take this over here and bring over the grater because I need one tablespoon of finely shredded lemon peel. Lemons have been washed and when you do this, now it said shredded, not grated. It said shredded, so I'm using this one. And the key is you don't want the white stuff, you just want the yellow.
And so you got to be a little careful. Don't go down too deep. There was a time I will take, sometimes I've taken a vegetable peeler and just used the vegetable peeler to peel the skin. And um, that's for some drinks that I do. Okay, I'll come back after I finish shredding this. Well, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So I'm not going to start all over. So I'm just going to tell you what I did while I thought I was on the recorder. One of the things I showed you was that I had a tablespoon of the finely shredded lemon peel. So I dumped it in with the one tablespoon of butter because they're all going in the pot at the same time. Then I did the, the rest of the lemon, so the lemon that I took the shred, the outside from, I juiced it using this juicer because I really like this juicer. Before I got this juicer, my daughter had this, and I really loved it because you can put it in and do this. The only problem I see with this one is that all the seeds are in here. So I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to pour the juice on that one because this is like a colander, a strainer. And the juice or the seeds stay up top. Okay? So, and it catches it nicely and it measures it so I can tell if it's a half a teaspoon or it's got milliliters on the side. The only reason I knew that I wasn't recording is because the camera has an auto shut off. And so it was automatically shutting this off. Okay, I got shadow here. And so that's how I knew. So that's how I use this one. Dump it in there. Alright, I will be back after I have my entire one half cup of lemon juice. I shall be back and I'll make sure I turn on the, the recorder. So one of the very important things I thought about while I was off camera was trying to keep your workspace uncluttered and clean. So while I was off camera, I was washing up those extra dishes and things um, because then there's less area or less things to make a mistake with or to contaminate. So you have to be aware of that. So just want you to know that. So here's my four egg yolks. Here's my sugar, cornstarch, flour, and salt all mixed together. So I had mixed that with my spatula. So that's all there. Put that on the spoon rest. And then the next part of the recipe is... So you mix those together in a minimum medium bowl, beat egg yolks and water until smooth. So medium bowl, egg yolks, pouring in the water. And I think I'm going to use this thin one. I don't know, well, I'll check <laughs> to make sure that I talked about the thin whisk, the thick whisk that I got at a restaurant supply house, or the thin whisk. Well, this one is really thick. It doesn't, it doesn't budge. I mean, but it will whip. I've used it many times, but I think this one will do better. So, I don't know what they mean by smooth. I mean, water and egg yolks? Why wouldn't they be smooth? Why couldn't they be smooth? Alright. I think with all that whipping and foam, I really think it's mixed. And yes, I have made this recipe multiple times. However, 
I always put the recipe up here because if you try to do something from memory all the time, especially when you don't make it like once a week or once every couple of weeks and you make a couple of them. I think the last time I made lemon meringue pot was the last time I went to my friend's house for, to play cards and that's a couple of years ago. It's not because I couldn't have gone to play cards. It was, I was busy. Every time when she had cards, I was off somewhere on a trip. And I'm in town this time, which makes it really great. Okay, so now I'm going to, what's it, turn on this. And I put it on, since this is electric, and this is a Samsung, um, I put it on number four. So that's like midway. That's like medium heat because four and above is is hot. And if there's an indicator on the on the knob where it's like double dark, that just says it's a little bit more. All right. So put that there. I'm gonna make a hole in the middle to pour. Does it say? Well, gradually stir in the sugar mixture. So I'm just going to do it in the middle and wet just a little bit as, as it kind of, so because there's flour in here. And flour, that's why I mix the flour in with the sugar really well because otherwise it would lump up. So I'm just taking a little bit from the sides and I'm gradually pouring it in and getting some of the dry liquid a little bit at a time. And I just go a little wider, a little wider and it incorporates the dry liquid. Now because this is sugar with cornstarch, you could technically um, pour it all in, but it is so much nicer and making sure you have no lumps, right, by doing a little bit at a time. Got on my phone. Now this is heating up, but once it starts to get warm, you do not in any way want to stop stirring because that's when you'll wind up with lumps. In fact, instead of using my wooden spoon, I'm going to use the whisk. So. Stir constantly over medium heat until the mixture thickens and comes to a full boil. And then you're going to boil it one minute. So I don't want to bore you standing here stirring because it may be 10, 15 minutes. The pie crust is in the oven getting brown. I will be back when I get to the mixture thickens. Okay, so <laughs> I got the boiling. It is really thick. I mean, so it's really thick right now. So we are going to add the butter and the Make sure you can see me. Yes. Turn you over just a little bit. How's that? Come back over here. All right. So I'm adding the butter and the lemon peel. And I'm whipping that up. I'm letting the butter get melted. The, the lemon juice is room temperature. All right, hopefully my... So. Ugh, I can smell the lemon. All right, let me check that. It's not quite ready yet. So my filling is ready before my pie crust 
But see how thick that is? Now, as it cools, it will get thicker. But in the meantime, I'm just going to leave it sit over the burner, even though the burner is off, but the burner is still hot. And it will keep this a little warm. Lid on, and then let's get that pie crust done. I took a taste. It's so good. Just a taste of the, the filling. Because I can't taste the pie until tonight. Okay. So, I've started putting the meringue into the pie plate. And I just want to make sure that it goes all the way around. But it's a nice brown. It's not too brown and it's not burnt. One of the things you can do when you, you're pre-baking your pie crust is to put some beans in the bottom of it. And what the beans in the bottom of it will do is keep it from puffing up. Now, in the store-bought cake, I mean, pie crust, you normally don't have to do that because they don't tend to pop up. See, this is just enough for a deep dish pie crust. Now if I was making this to be at home, then I'd put it in a, I'd make my own crust and I'd put it in a thing, but I don't want to, I've lost many a pie plate and I'm sure some of you have lost pie plates, so. Mmm, I mean it's got that strong lemony taste. And, yeah, that's from the flour. Mmm, yes, definitely. I may decide to just take half the pie and keep half the pie. <laughs> or I may wind up making a, another one of these. So now, let me make sure I get the camera in the right place. Actually, I'm going to move this over. I'm going to put the pie but not on the burner, because the burner is still hot. Put the pie over here. <laughs> oh, that tasted so good. And now, I'm going to make the meringue. In here are the four egg whites that we divided earlier, and one quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. So, one quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. And that's in there. And so I'm going to start this going. And, but it's, it's kind of backwards because the dial is on the other side. But for you to be able to see it without me bringing out that table, we'll do that. So, we've got that. So, this is the first time I'm using the whisk. So, we're going to start it slow. So I can mix in the cream of tartar into the egg whites. Now, according to the directions, beat with electric meter beater on medium until soft peaks form. Now I learned on the last one that I need to turn off the sound for you because for me, it's not very loud and it's it's not disturbing, but coming up here on the camera, it doesn't do too well. But I'm going to, so I'm, this is a test for the whisk to see how well it does. And I'm looking at the mixture of the cream of tartar in there and I don't know, 
think what I'm going to do is turn it off. I'm going to lift this up. And the cream of tartar is still there. So what I'm going to do, I got a spoon in here somewhere. Not my, yeah, got a, I got another whisk. So let's see how this cream of tartar mixes in here. Okay, so what I needed to do was turn the mixer on higher speed. So, okay, so I'm going to turn this up and I'm going to turn it on a higher speed until it gets to the point where I'm ready to start adding the sugar and then I'll turn the camera back on because for you, the noise may get a little bit loud. For me, not at all. Okay, yeah, the mixer is a little noisy. So, but in this particular clip, I am beginning to add the sugar. And I'm adding the sugar just a teaspoon tablespoon at a time and I do that because if you just pour it all in there it'll take a long time but it won't incorporate into the egg whites right and the sugar needs to melt or dissolve into the egg whites and so it's just a lot easier to take the time and just do it slowly and so that's what we're doing here. And and the egg whites, as you could see at the very beginning, looking into the bowl, the egg whites are whipped and they're, they've got peaks. And now we're just adding the sweetness to this egg white, this meringue that we're going to be doing just a little bit at a time. Now that is some stiff meringue. I probably mixed it way too long. <laughs> but it is so stiff. It's just sticking to the to the whisk. So I guess I'm gonna give the whisk an A plus. How's that? Pull this out. I move this guy out of the way a little bit. And I bring back, where are we? We bring back the pie. Now, this is a lot of meringue. It is. It's like candy. All right, I need a knife. Okay, do my little sandwich knife thing here. So, like I said, one of the reasons why I'm going to pastry school so I can learn how to make these things like really pretty. But one of the things I do know that I need to seal the edge right of the with the meringue. Oh, this is a I whip this up really nice. Right? Come on. Can't do it left hand. Do it right hand. All right. Now, I don't know. Some of you have some secret, but like I said, by going to pastry training for pastry chef, I'm going to learn how to do all this stuff instead of the way I learned at my mother's knee. Nah, not at her knee, but... She would watch me when I'd say, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try a recipe and she'll go, okay. You know. She tells the story of the time I said, I wanna make this pie cake. And I may make this cake for you one day. But it's a, a 
yellow cake and it had pineapple filling between the layers and a seven minute frosting outside. Well, everybody loved the pie, the cake. I was under 14. I, I, my life is kind of di divided between where we lived. We lived in a small town in an apartment building in Rankin, Pennsylvania. And when I was 14, in December uh, when I, of the year I turned 14, um, we, my parents had built a house and we moved into the house in December and I started a new school in the middle of December. So not even at the beginning of the school year. Man, do I have a lot of, this is going to be hot. Mmm. All right. I'm going to use all of this with this meringue. I'm not. Isn't there a way to make a, a meringue kind of cookie? I'll leave this a little bit and see. Put a little coconut on top. All right. All right. So, supposedly you're supposed to have peaks. Well, we're going to have, well, we can have a few peaks. Right. How about that? <laughs> A few peaks. So it has that little brown tips. Okay. So now it goes back into the oven for how long? Let's see. With a narrow spatula or knife, seal meringue, rim of pie, shell, or crumb crust. I did that. This helps prevent shrinkage of topping during baking. Use the knife or spatula to swirl the meringue slightly, but do not make high peaks. Okay, so i got to go back. So we're going to swirl the meringue, but no high peaks. See, I'm seated in stores, but... Okay, so we got that. It says, we're spoon meringue into a pastry tip, but we're not piping anything on here. And it says, this makes topping for one nine-inch pie. Well, yeah. So we could do a coconut meringue topping, but I'm not going to do that. We can do nut, and we can do chocolate sprinkles. We're not going to do that. If I was going to do this at home, I'm going to, I would put coconut shreds. But since I'm taking this to a party tonight, I'm not going to put coconut shreds on it. All right. Into the oven we go at 400 degrees. And what does it say? For how long? Hmm. All right. I don't see. Anyway, I'm going to put it, pop it in the oven. And I'm going to peek in at about five minutes because it shouldn't take that long for this to go. So. All right, so we're going to get the pie out of the oven. I don't want it to sit right on the Thing. I want some air going underneath it. So, oh, I've lowered the temperature from 400 degrees to 200. And here's the rest of the meringue with some, with some coconut on top. I'm just going to let it cook in there. And uh, I'll take some pictures of it. But this is your lemon meringue pie. It's a looks beautiful doesn't it nice color so I'm gonna let it sit here and cool for a little bit and then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator so that it will cool down and I'm, I'm leaving here in a couple hours and I'll be able to take the pie and if you're wondering how I'm gonna carry it I have a Tupperware um, cake carrier and because of this height, I'm going to make sure that I'm doing it. It's kind of lopsided, huh? I put two, I made it high on one side and low on the other. Well, that's okay.
you know what counts, right? Is that it tastes good. That's all. I've tasted the meringue. It's perfect. I've already, you know, you, you saw me taste the filling. It's perfect. And I was sitting there while I was doing the dishes saying, maybe I should stop and buy a uh, Marie Callender lemon meringue pie and take it over there. Now, she would be mad at me forever, for a long, well, not forever, but until I made her a real lemon meringue pie. So, this is going out the house tonight. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe, hit the bell. This is Eclectic Alchemy, so I am, I talk about your mind and law of attraction and cooking and gardening and some sewing and whatever else I'm doing. And now I'm going to chef school, so I'm going to take you to chef school with me. Anyway, I will see you in the next video.